Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. Tonight, I am honored and especially humbled to be here to bring you the word of the Lord before our Father comes up to speak over the land and to release the patriarchal blessing. Very quickly, in the spirit of honor, one more time, can we please honor our Father, the General Overseer, over the redeemed Christian Church of God, Daddy Enoch Adeboye. Come on, make that louder. Shout! Hallelujah. Daddy, thank you so much for being a blessing for over nations and many generations. We are honored and we thank God for your life. In that same vein, I want to quickly honor all the patriots and fathers of faith that are here tonight. We honor you for your labor of love in the body of Christ and in the nations of the world. I want to also sincerely honor the executive governor of Edo State, His Excellency Governor Godwin Obaseki and his dear wife. Thank you so much for coming. Tonight, if you are ready to receive the word, one more time, shout glory to God. Is that how you receive the word in a ghost state? Somebody shout glory! Brothers and sisters, the origin of light is not electricity. The origin of light is the life of God. And that life is in a person called Jesus. In John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4, it said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. He said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. He said in him was life. And the life was the light of men. I submit to you tonight that if you will receive the light of God, then you have to make contact with the life of Jesus. If you don't have that life, the best light you can have is electricity. And you and I know how unreliable electricity can be. Tonight, somebody will receive the life that is in Christ Jesus. And the light of God will shine over you. But before I talk about that life, I want to go back a little to tell you about the foundation of darkness. Because as light originates from life, so also does darkness originate from death. And so when you find the people in darkness the crisis is not the darkness the crisis is the death that has taken over them and so the bible told us that the word came from before the beginning and brought us life it also got to connote that darkness also had something to do with humanity from the very beginning his excellency was speaking a moment ago and he said the nation is in darkness that is very true and the reason the nation is in darkness is because death is still reigning over many. And so tonight, what God has come to do is to remove death from your life so that light can shine and dissipate darkness. When man was created, God came to him and the Lord began to counsel him and in fact gave him a commandment. And the commandment the Lord gave him was to caution him against death. Because death will bring darkness. But you know the problem with the first man is that he never grew up. He was created a man. So even when God was talking to him, because he lacks experience, he doesn't understand the effect and the impact of death. Obviously, he took the word of God for granted. But what he didn't know was that before he came, there was war in the heavens. There were princes fighting over colonizing the earth realm. In John chapter 10 verse 10, he said the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal and to destroy. There was already a prince on earth and the agenda of that prince is to steal from humanity, is to kill humanity and is to destroy humanity. So when God was talking to the man, he didn't know the impact and the effect of going on before he came because he was in a garden. And he was eating all he needed to eat. So he thought life was about apple. He thought life was about good health. He thought life was about enjoyment. He didn't know that 
two governments were contending over the earth. There was the government of light and there was the government of darkness. And the attempt of darkness was to infiltrate that garden so that everything God gave him, he would lose. And so God told him, the key to preserve your realm is to stay obedient. And God gave him one commandment of all the three that is in the garden. He said, you can freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, don't eat it. The day you eat it, you will die. The man didn't know what death meant. I wish he asked God, what is the meaning of death? Maybe if he knew what death represented, he would have taken the word of the Lord serious. But he didn't know what death meant. When he ate that tree, that was when he entered the school of experience. And death began to teach him. Now, before God gave him that commandment, there were five things God made available to him that represented life. The first was given to him even before he was created. Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. The word image there represents the nature of God, the glory of God, the essence of God. So one of the ingredients of life is glory. When a man has the life of God, he carries the nature and the essence of God. The second thing God gave him was his likeness, which is God's righteous character. So the reason God cannot sin is because he has the nature and the character of righteousness. So God gave him his glory, which is what makes him to glow and to live in the class of God. God also gave him his righteousness, which was the character to live above sin. That was not all. In Genesis 1.28, God gave him dominion. So God gave him authority over all the beds of the air, over everything that creeped on the land, and over everything that was in the water. That was not all. In Genesis chapter 2, the Bible said, in the cool of the day, Genesis 3.8, it said the voice of God came walking in the garden. So God gave him authority to live in his presence. That means the man was not in the garden. He was in the presence of God, functioning from the garden. The garden actually connotes the presence of God. And finally, in Genesis 2.9, the Bible said God planted the tree of life in the garden. He wanted the man to eat it. So if the man had eaten it, he would have had the glory of God. He would have had the righteous character of God. He would have had the presence of God. He would have had the authority of God. And he would have had the life of God. But unfortunately, he violated the one command that God gave him. Don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the serpent knew that if this man functions like this, he will be a prince on the earth. He will manifest God's glory. He will carry God's presence. He will carry God's authority. That means I will not have jurisdiction to function on the earth. So the serpent brought the code of rebellion. He said, did God really say you should not eat of the tree? That is in the garden. He said no. God did not really say so. Wow. Is that what God said? God didn't say you should eat it. The wife showed up and said well. God said we cannot eat it. Or touch it. He has, she has added her own commandment. Was that what God said? Okay no problem. If you are conscious that God said you shouldn't eat or touch. Why then will you eat it? The serpent told him. Because God knows. That the day you eat it. You will become as wise as God. But you were already created in the image of God. The Bible said, let us make man in our own image. So which other God are you becoming like? The man did not have spiritual intelligence. And he disobeyed God and ate of that tree. Immediately, something happened. He descended from glory. The original man is supposed to function as God functions. Seeing the Holy Ghost and acting alike. But now that he has fallen, his feelings became his God. Anything he felt like doing. He found himself doing it. So if he needs a car and he doesn't have a car, he can kill to buy a car. If he needs, if he has a sexual appetite and he's not married, he can just find anybody and commit immorality. Because now he is like the animal. And the Bible said, a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. So a creation that was made in the image of God became like an animal. The nature of God was lost. The righteous character of God was lost. And that was not all. He lost authority. This man was supposed to rule over the demonic realm. But unfortunately, when he obeyed the devil, a law was activated. Whoever you yield your servants to obey, yourself servant to obey, the servant of him you are 
whom you have obeyed. So when you obey the devil, he exchanges authority. He became a slave of the devil. And guess what the devil does? The devil kills. The devil steals. The devil destroys. So a man who was supposed to live in perfect health suddenly started falling sick when he gets cold. How can cold make you sick? You were created to rule over cold. Suddenly, the man whom the animals were supposed to be his pet, the mosquito bites him and he falls sick. How can you fall sick? You are not designed to fall sick. You were designed to rule over everything that creeps on the earth. You were designed to rule over everything that flies in the air. How, how come you are now weak and sickness has mastered you? Because he has lost authority. Oh, when Adam was in the garden, even the lion, he could tell him, sit down. And the lion sat down. When the mosquitoes come, he could tell them, sing. And they will sing for him. But now, everything he should rule over, he has become a slave. Because death has mastered him. As if that was not all. He lost the presence of God. Because a sinner cannot carry that presence. The presence of God is the government of God. The moment he violated God, he could no longer stay within that government. Meanwhile, there is a technology in the presence of God. The technology of the presence is that when the presence of God overshadows you, you see his image. And when you see him, you become like him. So man was not supposed to grow old in age. He was supposed to grow in light, in maturity. Because the elders of heaven, the Bible didn't tell us their age. They were just like God. Because the more you see him, the Bible says, we all with unveiled faces, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord. We are changed from glory to glory. So the man is supposed to mature from glory to glory. But now, the presence of God is no longer there. Oh, what he sees is now what he becomes. And what he sees are manipulations from the devil. What he sees are suggestions from the devil. So suddenly, the man discovers that his vitality began to fail as if that is not enough even the life of God he didn't have anymore so he became like an animal and the devil now knows that he is now his slave that is the origin of darkness so darkness is actually the byproduct of death and that byproduct is absence of glory is absence of righteous character is absence of authority is absence of the presence of god and is absence of the life of god many have become like animals and that is not all when a man lives like an animal ruled by his senses controlled by the devil and he leaves this world it doesn't end because when god told him you will die maybe he thought it was cessation of life nobody will die all of us will live forever death is not cessation of life death is actually quality of life and location of life when a man dies he can no longer live like god he can no longer manifest the character of god he can no longer manifest the power of god he can no longer manifest the wisdom of god he can no longer manifest the glory of god the quality of his life reduces but that's not all when he now departs from this world he will now discover that absence from the body is not cessation of life the bible said in revelation chapter 20 verse 15 he said the books were open and he said whomever's name is not found written in the book of life he said he shall be cast into the lake of fire he said that is the second death so the moment the man fell he became a slave in time and he was going to be condemned eternally in hell but when god looked at man there was something about god the bible said god is love the love of god couldn't let him how can i take time to create this man and he ends up the slave of the devil how can i spend time create this man he becomes a slave of sin how can i spend time create this man only for him to be destroyed and so second peter 3 9 tells us that god does not intend that any man should perish but he desires that all should repent so john 3 16 he said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life now all men are condemned there is no way to bring life into the world anymore and the love of god won't let god allow man die now there are four things about god there is the wisdom of god which gives him authority to create there is the wrath of god which insists that the wages of sin is death there is the love of god that said 
man cannot die because I love him. And there's a mercy of God that says mercy prevails over judgment. The challenge is that if God tilts to mercy, God will become unrighteous because the wages of sin is death. And if God kills man, his mercy will not allow him. How will God balance the equation? What God did was that he stepped out of his throne. He took off his garment of divinity and he took upon himself the garment of a man. And God wore the garment of a man. And God entered the womb of a woman. God hid there for nine months. When the devil was laughing, thinking that man is finished, all of a sudden, the Bible said, a virgin shall give birth. Virgins don't give birth because by all Biology refutes it. It's not logical. Virgins cannot give birth, but a virgin has to give birth because this time the spermatozoan cannot come from a man. It's the Holy Ghost that has to inseminate the woman. He said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. That being that shall be formed in you shall be called the Son of the Highest. And so God formed in the womb of a woman. And when God came out, Satan didn't know what was happening because before this time, all the men that God began to use, he tried them and destroyed them. Samson was demonstrating power. He went to him, he fell. David, mighty king, he went to him, he fell. Abraham, mighty prophet, he went to him, he fell. He said, there's no hope for humanity anymore. Suddenly, a man came and was shouting by the river Jordan, make a way for the Lord. The Lord is coming. And the devil began to wonder, how can the Lord come? I know the Lord is clothed with thunder and lightning. I know the Lord is in the third heaven. Where will the Lord come from? And then he now discovered that the Bible said a virgin will give birth. And he started checking, is there a news that a virgin has given birth? And he heard eight days later that a virgin has given birth. He wanted to kill him, but God was not ready for his purpose yet. They ran with him to Egypt. At 30, he showed up again. And he came to the river Jordan. And suddenly, the Bible said, behold... The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And when John saw him, God gave him a sign. He said, the one that the Spirit will descend. He said, he's the Messiah. And when he saw him, he baptized him. And he saw the Holy Ghost descend upon him. And he knew that this was the chosen one. And for the first time, God spoke from heaven. The man I wanted to create in Eden that I couldn't create. Now I have become that man. Behold my beloved son in whom I am well placed. This is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. That day, for the first time, answer came into the world. Because the problem of the world is death. Death that produced darkness. And there was nowhere on earth that life could be found. But for the first time, life was packaged in a man. And the man was walking the earth. When the devil saw him, the devil said, all we need to do is to kill him. When we kill him, it's over. But the wisdom of God now went to work. Because mercy has worked, love has worked, wrath has worked. Now wisdom is about to go to work. And when the devil came to attack him, he didn't know by killing him, he was going to release him. Because if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because when Jesus was walking on the earth, life was in one man. When you kill him, you puncture him. And when you puncture him, the Holy Ghost begins to distribute life. Anybody that believes, life enters that person. Death is removed. If the devil knew, he would have let him alone. So killing him was a strategy of releasing life. Killing him was a divine strategy of releasing life and so when the devil planned it God allowed him and Jesus was nailed on the cross he was naked they thought they had humiliated him but they didn't know that the battle was going to be fought from the cross because the Bible said in Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 it said having spoiled principalities and powers he made a public show of them triumphing over them by the cross you came to me on the mountain of temptation you told us to fight that's not the arena to fight God does not fight like men fight God is not going to fight you with muscles God will fight you by a wisdom superior to you and the way God will fight you is that when you want to kill him he will surrender in killing him he will defeat you and so he spoiled principalities and powers and he made a public show of the devil triumphing over him by the cross the moment that happened all the demons of hell now said let's gather let's gather and keep him in hell but three days later the bible said if that same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead something happened the holy ghost entered the grave and when the holy ghost entered the grave the holy ghost entered jesus you can't kill him no you won't kill God he said this commandment have I received from my father I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again you were not killing me I was laying down now the job is done and he resurrected the question is why did God do that God did not need to prove himself he is God all by himself he created all things you and I were created by him 
all spirits were created by him. He didn't die to prove a point. He didn't rise from the dead to prove a point. But there was something he needed to do. If he doesn't rise from the dead, you can't receive life. The only way you can receive life is for him to rise from the dead. And so when Paul was teaching, he said, if we believe in our hearts, this is where the answer to human crisis is. The Lord Jesus, and confess with our mouth, we shall be saved. He said, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So anybody who wants to come into life must believe in his heart and must confess with his mouth. But see, life is not about joining a religious organization. No. A thousand times, no. There were many religions on earth before Jesus came. After he left, many other religions have been formed. That's not what it's about. Life is about coming into light. And coming into light is so that the glory can be restored. The glory that was once lost can be restored. So the Bible said in Romans 8, 29 to 30, it said, him that he predestinated, him that he foreknew, he predestinated. Him that he predestinated, he called. Him that he called, he justified. Him that he justified, he glorified. So when a man received the life of God, something changed about him. He is no longer the man that was sick. He is no longer the man that was weak. The glory is so strong on his life that Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. That means the man carries so much glory that he becomes a wonder to his generation. So instead of him dying of sickness, he said, no, you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Because when you touch them, glory leaves you. So Christianity is a move of the manifestation of the glory of God. That's why when we talk, people are saved. When we lay hands on the sick, they recover. Because there is an economy of glory that the Holy Ghost causes to flow out of us. In 1 John 3, 9, he said, my little children, let no man deceive you. Him that doeth righteousness is righteous. So what God came to give us, give us is power above sin. Is power above death. And that's not all. He gave us access back to his presence. So he said, come boldly before the throne of grace. So when I have a crisis now, I don't need to beg. When I have a crisis now, all I need to do is to lock my door. And I lift up my hands. And I say, Father, and the presence descends. Guess what the presence does? There's wisdom there. I may be born poor. It doesn't mean I will end poor. Because when I'm in the presence and the presence open, I can touch the wisdom of God. I can formulate a strategy that can help a generation. That's why a Christian cannot be dull. A Christian cannot be a liability. This thing is not religion. It's access to the realm of God. Listen to me. When you receive Jesus tonight, you will have access to wisdom because wisdom dwells in the presence. You may, you may have come here poor. You will not go back poor. There is something you will download from the presence that will make you become a wonder to your generation. And that's not all. There is such a thing called favor. Why am I standing here tonight? I'm not qualified to be here. But there is such a thing called favor. The things you are not qualified for. All of a sudden, somebody will talk to somebody. Something will happen somewhere. And the people that matter will recommend you to those that matter. And you will find yourself walking in your high places. Because he has become the God of your salvation. I don't know where you are, you are now. But I prophesy over someone. You will step into favor that breaks from you will step into favor that commands the allegiance of kings there is a quality of existence that god has brought us to we don't have to beg we don't have to be sick we don't have to be weak we don't have to live in sin we don't have to be defeated no 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 the bible said we are joint heirs with christ everything christ owns he has shared with us his power his life his faith his presence his glory so that as he is so we shall be not in heaven in this world he said, as he is, so are we in this world. But you see, a generation has not realized the import of darkness. We are weak. We are defeated because we have not come out of darkness. We have embraced darkness. When Jesus calls, many remain. Oh, I don't want to leave my boyfriend. Oh, I don't want to leave my girlfriend. Oh, I don't want to leave my ancestral eyes. My great grandfathers worshipped it. My grandfathers worshipped it. What did he do for them? nothing no proof the psalmist said i was young now i'm old i've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread tonight you have to let go of everything and say jesus if there is glory in you i want to embrace you beyond religion 
Jesus, if there's authority in you, I want that authority. Jesus, if there is power in you, I want that power. Jesus, if there's righteousness in you, I want that righteousness. I am tired. That is when light will come. And trust me, you will do it desperately. Because he said, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with the whole of your heart. I've been in pain. I've been in trouble. There was a period of time, five years of my life, seven people died in my family. It was like a roll call. The spirit of death comes and calls the one he wants and they go. Call. Call the one. I was living like a Christian until God told me, no, you carry my power. You carry my presence. You carry my authority. You carry my life. What you decree is what will happen. He said, thou shalt decree a thing. It shall be established unto you. And I said, but God, I am not experienced. He said, you have Jesus. He is all the experience you need. I said, God, but I'm not strong. He said, you have Jesus. He is all the strength you need. And one day I stood up. I said, you spirit of death, in the name of Jesus, check out of this family. Till death, nobody has died. Because death is not a coincidence. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. And you don't have to be an apostle to walk it. He said, this sign shall follow them. Not prophets, not evangelists, not apostles, not pastors, not teachers. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. He said, they shall cast out devils. A generation is rising. The days of few giants is over. An army is about to rise. Because if yesterday God had one giant, today God will raise an army. He's moving from the voice of one to the cry of an army. So that what our fathers did as individuals, a generation in the territory will do. Imagine the weight that some of the generals here have commanded. What if they are 30? What if they are 50? What if they are 100? What if they are 1,000? Hear me, you are part of the army that God is raising. Because tonight, you will embrace Jesus and say, Jesus is you and I alone. I'm tired of religion. I want to experience you. A story was told. Of a blind man called Bartimaeus. His condition was so bad. That the whole nation. Called him after his condition. Blind Bartimaeus. He heard that Jesus was passing by. After all that he heard. That Jesus could do. He knew that was his moment. And he started shouting. Son of David. Have mercy on me. People came to him and said shut up. Do you think this kind of person has your time? He pushed them aside. Turned to the other side. Son of David. Have mercy on me. Your hunger can break protocols. If you are hungry tonight, that sickness can end. That poverty can end. That sickness can end. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Are you not tired of sin? Are you not tired of sickness? Are you not tired of poverty? Are you not tired of death? Tonight, the door is open. Before our father comes up to bless us. If you are seated there. And you know that you have tried your best. Today you want to give it all up to Jesus. This is your moment. Don't wait for anybody. Wherever you are standing. You are tired of religion. You are tired of sickness. You are tired of sin. You are tired of weakness. You want to receive the life of God. Wherever you are. Run to the front and surrender to Jesus. This is your hour. Run from wherever you are standing. Jesus is the answer. All of this was done to bring you Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Come from wherever. From wherever. And those of you watching online, scan the QR code now and make that decision. I'm not calling you to join a religious movement. I'm calling you into a relationship with Jesus. Where he will restore your glory. Where he will restore your life. Where he will restore your health. Where he will restore your power. Wherever you are, you may even be in the choir. Brothers and sisters, there are many singers that will go to hell. You may even be a preacher. There are many preachers that will go to hell. Until you genuinely, genuinely live up everything and run to Jesus, you have no hope. Keep coming. Keep coming. All the generals here came because of you. This meeting was put together because of you. There is a new face of a dust state. But these are the men that will make it happen. Men that understand righteousness. Men that understand power and authority. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't keep Jesus waiting. Keep coming. Thank you, Father. I'm going to lead you in a prayer of faith now. 
The Bible said, if you believe with your heart, the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth, so you believe with your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead for your justification. And on the strength of that belief, you now confess with your mouth, you say, Jesus, from today, become my Lord. Become my master. Become my owner. He said, if you do that, you will receive the life of God. God made it easy so that everyone can receive him. And when you do that, you can now receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost so that it can help you through the world to become everything God wants you to be. If you want to do that, place your hand on your chest as a sign of surrender. Those of you watching online, go ahead and do the same. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. I believe with my heart that he died for my sins. I believe with my heart that on the third day he rose again from the dead. Tonight, I surrender myself to you. Wipe away my sins and receive me into your family. I confess with my mouth that Jesus, the Son of God, is my Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life. I am born again. Thank you for receiving me, Father. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. If you have done that, congratulations. You have just received eternal life into your spirit. I'm going to pray over you now. And then where you are standing, just remain there. The counselors will attend to you because we are out of time and we can't manage all of that if you were to go back. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with our Father, your servant, and I decree and declare over these ones, making this commitment tonight, Lord, your hand will keep them. You will cause them to walk in the path of righteousness. All the days of their lives, they will walk in the fear of the Lord. They will serve your purpose. And these ones will not fall by the wayside. I decree from today, the hand of God will keep them. And so I commend you to God and unto the word of his grace, which is able to keep you and to give you an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. So let it be written. So let it be established in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Shout another hallelujah. If you don't mind, shout another hallelujah. The, the apostle has spoken. What can the pastor now say? Let somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.